Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about the diesel heater which is in the T6.1 California. The California comes with a diesel heater if you've got a coast or an ocean and you can have it as an option on the beach as well. And it's, uh, well, complicated and uh, unnecessarily so actually. A lot of you in the comments and uh, emails we've had have been asking about a quick video which describes the different functions of the diesel heater in the California and we thought we'd uh, put this together to try and give you a bit of a hand. So. Uh, there's actually two diesel heaters in the California, believe it or not, and uh, the first one, which is a Webasto heater, is a five kilowatt heat uh, heater, and it actually warms up the coolant in the engine. So uh, if it's between five and eight degrees outside and below, uh, when you drive off uh, with a cold engine, that fires up automatically. There's no settings for it on the panel or on the uh, dashboard or anything. Uh, that actually fires up and allows you to uh, get a, a nice warm engine uh, a lot quicker than it would have done otherwise and it's because modern diesel engines run really cool uh, because they're super efficient so uh, that sits underneath the uh, underneath the van you don't know about it you don't see it um, but the important one that you can control and will keep you warm at night uh, and help you defrost the van when it's not running uh, is the Eberspacher and that Eberspacher heater is a three and a half kilowatt heater uh, any of you which have used a you know an electric fan heater in the house, they're between two and a half and three thousand watts, something like that. Uh, so two and a half, three kilowatt. You'll know how hot those get, and they can get a room really, really warm. Um, three and a half kilowatts of power from the heater in the uh, California is loads, uh, and it will absolutely make it roast in here if you need it to. Uh, there's uh, power output settings between one and ten um, for the heat that it generates. Uh, and uh, if you're interested in what that means in terms of internal temperature, this list here um, gives you exactly that. I'll pop it in the comments below so you can see it. And we've got Patrick who runs a uh, YouTube channel called uh, Camp for Happiness. Uh, I'll put a link in the description up there to the video. He did a German video uh, where he tested all of these temperatures out with his 6.1. So massive thank you, um, Patrick, for doing that. And uh, Hopefully you don't mind me sharing this on our channel. Obviously I'm uh, linking to yours too. So yeah, it's really helpful knowing uh, those temperatures uh, so you can set the, uh, set the heater as you want. Now in the California, um, there's various functions that you have to turn the ignition on for and to test them, I'll have to turn it off and on. So it's, it's a bit of a, a pain, but what I'll do is I'll give a bit of a walk through the control panel and the functions because actually some of them are quite confusing. So Auxiliary heater, you go into it on here, just tap in, and you've got operating mode, settings, heat continuously and heat immediately. Now, it's probably easiest to describe the heater settings in two um, silos, if you like. So you've got heat continuously, first of all, which although it doesn't look like a button there, you click on it and you activate it that way, but I'll come on to that in a minute. Um, so heat continuously is where you want the heater to stay on all the time. Uh, so overnight, for example, if you're camping and you want the heater on overnight, uh, you don't want it to um, switch off at any point, um, notwithstanding those uh, temperature levels, obviously that it will cut in and out to maintain those temperature levels. Uh, but if you, want, uh, if you want to run the heater overnight or if you're parked up and having a, you know, a long, long day out or whatever, heat continuously is the one that you want. And, and to work that, you press on heat continuously, you hit activate, press the button in, it turns on the little um, heater bar symbol. You select which temperature um, level you want between one and 10, hit OK, and it will switch it on. And it's as straightforward as that. Um, so if I go OK on seven, um, it'll tell me to wait and it'll fire up in the background. Now heat continuously will run the heater for as long as you've got diesel in the van and the fuel warning light isn't on, on the dashboard. Um, and you've got enough power in the batteries to do it. So the leisure batteries, if you're on hookup, obviously that doesn't matter. Um, but if you're parked up by the side of the road or anything like that, or you know, if you're wild camping or not on a campsite with hookup, 
Um, it does obviously need power to run the heater, so um, you know that's important to, to remember that too. So if it doesn't fire up, the first thing to check is, have you got enough fuel in the van and the fuel level light isn't on? Um, and uh, have you got enough power in the leisure batteries? Um, the other thing to check as well is the heat level, because if you've got it set down at level one or two, and it's already 20 degrees in the van because you've been driving along and you've had the um, normal engine heating on, um, it might not fire up, although it's on. Um, so it might just be the uh, temperature level as well. Um, in terms of um, deactivating heat continuously, uh, it's quite easy. You just click on it, hit deactivate, and then it'll stop. Um, now the heater does run on for about two minutes or so after you turn it off, and that's just to make sure that the uh, heater itself blows all of the kind of um, any carbon or anything which might have built up while it's been running, just to make sure it cleans itself out properly. Uh, it's perfectly normal, don't worry about it. Um, usually the heater vent um, still chucks out a bit of warm air during that period as well, so don't be surprised if you tell it to deactivate and it doesn't and just basically keeps going. Um, it will stop, it's just in its, in its uh, cool down phase. You can tell because the, uh, the bars on the, uh, on the display, this little orange symbol up here, those will uh, go off when you hit deactivate and obviously it will then stop. Uh, one other thing that we found when we were camping in the Outer Hebrides was if you've got the heater on and you turn the ignition on and drive away, it will actually turn the heater off um, to save energy so you don't effectively run the diesel heater for the cabin as well as then running the engine with all of the normal heating vents from the dashboard and from the rear as well. So again, that caught us out a little bit because on the, on the T6 it didn't do that. Uh, on the T6.1 uh, it does. Um, so that is good to know. Um, so in terms of the other functions on here, uh, just uh, come out of that. Um, sorry, I just, uh, you can just hear it ramping up slightly in the background. You might not be able to hear that on the microphone, but uh, it's uh, just starting to blow. And that, that's obviously because we've started it up. Uh, so the other modes that are in here, so operating mode, is all to do with heat immediately. Um, now this is where it does get quite confusing if we're not careful. So if we look at, look at operating mode, it wants me to turn the ignition on to be able to do this. Um, heat immediately has actually got two functions. It's got heat immediately, which effectively turns the diesel heater on. Uh, I'm just gonna turn it off, hang on a second, deactivate. Um, so it actually has two modes. It's got heating, so auxiliary air heater, um, and it also has ventilate and it's got no change, which is basically what it says. It won't change the setting from the last time. Now, you might think, well, that, that doesn't make sense because heat, heat immediately surely means heat. Yes, I think you're right. Um, however, Volkswagen programming of this button and the display and everything else is not that clever. So when you set an operating mode in here of either auxiliary or air, air auxiliary heater or ventilate mode, that is what that button, so, sorry, let me just come back to it. Uh, it's what that heat immediately button does. So, and the heat immediately button doesn't change to say ventilate immediately if you've got it set to ventilate, it still says heat immediately. So, for example, if we set this to ventilate and then do heat immediately, I've got to turn the ignition off to do this. So if I turn that off and if I hit heat immediately, what actually happens, the little heater bars come on on there, but what actually happens is the dashboard vents start blowing out cold air or ambient temperature air. So that's the one on the right, the one on the left and two in the middle. It doesn't do the defrost function, it doesn't do feet and it also doesn't do the rear. Sorry, I'm just gonna turn this off. Select the right thing, heat immediately right. Um, but it actually just ventilates the van. Um, now you might think that sounds quite good for summer or making sure that we don't get too much condensation in the van or anything like that. It's not really designed for that because under operating mode, the other thing with heat immediately, sorry, need to turn the ignition on again. Um, the other thing with heat immediately and the functions of heat immediately, i.e. heat or ventilate, um, is that it only runs for a certain amount of time. Um, and there's a preset amount of time that you set in sorry, in settings. So you go through here 
um, scroll through running time. So if you go in here, you can set 10, 20, 30, 40 in minutes, all the way up to 120 minutes. And that is how long heat immediately will run for. So regardless of whether you've got it in ventilate mode or whether you've got it in uh, heat mode, uh, it will only run for that amount of time that you have it set in there and then it'll switch itself off. So you might think, well, what's the point in that? And I'd probably agree from a ventilate point of view. From a heat point of view, if you've left it set to heat, um, so again, remember in operating mode, if you get it set here to auxiliary heater, if you leave it set on that, and this is your temperature setting that it'll come on at again, so say seven, um, what that means is if you used heat immediately, it would switch on the heater, the diesel heater, for 120 minutes, because that's what we left it set at, at level seven, uh, which on our sheet would be 21 degrees C. All that sounds quite helpful, actually, if you just want it for a short period of time. But the main point to remember is that the remote, so the little remote control you get, it's a radio remote control um, with quite a good range. Actually, when you hit the on button on this, that operates the heat immediately function. Um, and when I say heat immediately function, I mean whatever you last set heat immediately to be. So if it's last set to ventilate and you press this button, it will ventilate. If you left it on heating, it will heat. And it runs it for the amount of time which is in the settings. So if I hit this button now, what would happen is it would run heat immediately We've last set it to heating and it's set to 120 minutes. So, uh, so if I press this button, we'd get heating in the van at level seven for two hours. That's it. That's what it would do. It wouldn't stay on overnight. So if you've taken this to bed and you're hoping that it would stay on overnight, it won't. And that's a big difference between the T6 and the 6.1 because in the 6, it didn't have any of this extra function. It was either on or off and it stayed on or off and the remote made it stay on or off. So you could be upstairs in bed, 10 o'clock at night, press the button on the remote and the heater would stay on all night for you. Um, doesn't do that in the 6.1. It operates the heat immediately function. Uh, the other thing that you can do with uh, the heat immediately function is program it to come on at a certain time or of day. Um, so for example, departure time, if we change this one and go to change, uh, you can set a day here. So Monday or whichever, and there's an at function as well which is every day um, so let's pick Friday seven o'clock in the morning um, and then what this will do if you say activate is it will run the heat immediately function at seven o'clock in the morning um, for the preset amount of time and at the preset amount of heat if you've got it on the heat function or it will ventilate if you've got it on the ventilate function so you've got to remember which one you've last set it to um, even more confusingly, they've used blue bars to say that you've set the um, departure, which some might think would mean it's set to ventilate, but that isn't the case because we've got it set to heat. So you can see how just with a bit of extra thinking about how the control panel works and how they describe things on the buttons and the different colors they use for things, how you could clear up a lot of the mystery about how the heater works in the uh, California. But it is very comprehensive and it does work really well. Um, so just disable that uh, departure time there. And that pretty much is it in terms of functionality. Um, it's, it's such a good heater uh, and it pains me when I see comments talking about the heater not being very good in the California and it's usually about understanding how the, the difference between heat continuously and heat immediately. The heat immediately function um, if you're new to the California and you just want to you know, make sure you have a decent camping experience and everything else, just make sure that you use heat continuously overnight, otherwise you will get um, into real trouble because it'll switch off after a preset amount of time. I think even from the factory, I think it might even come as 60 minutes or something like that. So it's not long at all. So just, just be really careful with that. Just be really careful. So uh, that, that's, um, that's a, a bit of a walkthrough of the functions of the uh, control panel and of the diesel heater um, don't be afraid of using it. it doesn't use much diesel at all it's really economical um, once it's up to temperature it's not that loud either we find um, we certainly wouldn't want to have a camper without a heater um, it makes the world a difference whether you're out for the day 
uh, just having a picnic or you know walking the dog or whatever to come back in have a nice warm van while you're having a cup of tea and everything else makes a really big difference and sleeping comfort overnight absolutely fantastic having a heater so if you're thinking about buying a beach um, so you need to buy the heater please 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 buy the heater uh, it's got fantastic residual value in terms of you know people go out looking for beaches with heaters um, it's that good and it really is worthwhile if you're thinking about buying a new beach and looking at the specification um, if you've got a coast or an ocean um, lucky you um, you already have a heater and uh, hopefully you'll know how to use it after this video so Thanks very much for watching our video. Uh, hopefully this has helped. Uh, if you like this kind of content, then please like and subscribe, and we will see you again soon for another set of California time.